lead up to the American Communist Revolution of 2020, the United States was displaying alarming signs of falling to mob rule. Justice was disappearing from America. There were calls to abolish the police and all immigration enforcement. They're now chanting defund the police. People who looted businesses faced no charges, but people who tried to run their businesses were fined or arrested. Looters stormed into Lower Manhattan last night. They destroyed store windows in Soho and lit fires during another night of violent protests. Eyewitness News reporter Candace McCowan spoke to business owners cleaning up the mess. NYPD saying when night fell, the destruction began. Cameras capturing looters inside this Urban Outfitters at 14th and 6th, moments after the windows were shattered. Now at 5, arrested again, a plantation gym owner back in custody for the third time just hours after to being released from jail. That gym owner was arrested for violating the guidelines to slow the spread of COVID-19. Everything was being turned upside down. America was falling into lawlessness, but why? The answer is found in 1 John 3, 4, which tells us that sin is lawlessness. We covered the significance of this in our 2018 video, Why the Left Rages Against Trump and for Lawlessness. America had become a cesspool of sin and abomination. As a result, God allowed law and justice to disappear in America and injustice and lawlessness to reign. After same-sex quote marriage was quote legalized in 2015 in America, the acceptance or approval of homosexual abominations which are condemned directly in scripture, see Romans 1, and by the natural law, became common even among so-called conservatives. The same is true of so-called transgenderism and gender confusion, in which men pretend to be women and vice versa. So, so if Caitlyn Jenner were to walk into Trump Tower and want to use the bathroom, you would be fine with her using any bathroom she chooses. That is correct. Hey, the LGBT community, they are incredible. And you should see how they've come out in, in full force for my father every single day. I'm part of that community and we love the man. The idea that an eight-year-old child or a 10-year-old child decides, you know, I decided I want to be transgender. That's what I think I'd like to be. It may make my life a lot easier. There should be zero discrimination. It's interesting. I don't know if you've uh, looked around during the month of June recently, but every international corporation you can think of, every bank, every airline, every consumer product, every retail store is hosed down in rainbow flags. They've all changed their uh, avatars on social media to rainbow colors. I took an Uber the other morning, and the little line that shows me where my driver was going, the route, it turned into a rainbow path. They are... They are the, the status quo. The LGBT rights movement is the establishment. It is the man. When that happens in a society, God has been known to wipe the society out. Hence, you knew it was only a matter of time before God would punish America in a dramatic way. And he did. He allowed communists to take control of the country. What a fall. In Psalm 106, we read that because the people became unclean in their practices and played the harlot in their deeds, the anger of the Lord was enkindled, and he delivered them into the hands of the Gentiles. God often sent people into captivity and bondage for sins. Besides the acceptance of LGBT abominations, millions upon millions of people in America and around the world commit the mortal sin of looking at pornography, a sin which sends people to hell. In 2016 alone, Pornhub, the most popular porn site, got 4,599,000,000 hours of porn views. That's equal to 5,246 centuries. The site got 23 billion visits. That's 729 people a second, or 64 million a day, the amount of people that live in the entire United Kingdom. Eight out of ten men between the ages of 18 and 30 view pornography at least monthly. Three of those are daily viewers of porn. More than a third of women watch pornography at least once a week. Roughly 40% of women claim to use pornography at least occasionally. Which countries watch the most porn? Canada, the UK, and the USA continue to be in the top three positions, respectively. The US, which is in the number one position, is responsible for nearly 40% of total porn traffic. There's over $3,000 is spent on porn every second on the internet. At least 30% of all data transferred across the internet is porn related. Porn sites receive more regular traffic than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined each month. 
90% of teens and 96% of young adults are either encouraging, accepting, or neutral when they talk about porn with their friends. 64% of young people actively seek out pornography weekly or more often, and all of them hide it from their parents. So if you're a parent and you're like, well, my kid doesn't do it, you don't even know what you're talking about. You need to start getting into conversations with your kids. Satan has spiritually slain multitudes with that mortal sin, which darkens people's minds, hardens their hearts, and puts them in bondage to the devil. There are also countless forms of heresy and false Christianity that flourish in America. Millions of babies have been aborted, contraception, divorce, end quote, remarriage, fornication, taking the Lord's name in vain, and general godlessness are rampant. Washington is so lacking in grace and so under the control of the devil that even though the horrid practices of abortion mills like Planned Parenthood were exposed like never before in the past few years, Congress still wasn't able to defund such an evil organization. God also allowed this fall of America to happen very quickly. The change occurred rapidly, as an illustration of the truth that unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain, Psalm 127. Prior to the COVID hoax, America seemed to be doing extremely well economically. Following Trump's policies of deregulation, tax cuts, and energy independence, the economy improved greatly. Unemployment was almost at a record low, wages were rising, and more. Of course, not everyone was doing well, but things improved for many. Today's jobs report gave the president something to talk about. 250,000 jobs added in October, wages rising at the fastest clip in nearly a decade. America now has the best economy in the history of our country, and we want to keep it that way. But it was a facade because almost all of the people were godless and involved in sexual sins. It was a foundation of sand because the masses were in general very immoral. They didn't care about God. They didn't have time for God. They only really cared about their careers, their successes, their relationships, their amusements, and their sins. They also, generally speaking, accepted the, quote, LGBT abominations which fly in the face of the natural law. Hence, God allowed the COVID conspirators to take control, and immediately within just a few weeks, the transformation of America began. People were locked down in great numbers by communist, quote, governors, and private businesses were closed, all over a hoax. A hard dose of reality in New York City, where we learned that the city could go back to a full shutdown in the coming weeks. Got that word from Mayor Bill de Blasio today. Of course, it's the last thing New York's struggling restaurant owners and workers want to hear. More than half of restaurants in New York City will not survive the next six months without federal relief. That's the word from the New York Restaurant Association. The data, though, taken before the state announced a ban on indoor dining, which went into effect today. NBC's Dan Lieberman on an industry pushed to the brink. After tonight, this room will be dark and it will be the empty space. We will be shuttering everything. These are the words New York City restaurateur Estelle Lau hoped she would never have to say. But with a citywide ban on indoor dining now in effect, Sunday night was their last. This morning we let go a lot of staff. Um, from both the front and the back of the house. They're devastated, they're worried, they're worried for their families. The American Gastro Pub, located at Brooklyn Bridge Park's waterfront, is one of countless neighborhood gems forced to close their doors. And it's not just the neighborhood spots. Many of New York's restaurants are shutting down. Among them, the iconic 21 Club, set to close indefinitely in March. And there are thousands more, says Hospitality Alliance's Andrew Ritchie. This is an extinction event. I mean, these are restaurants that are part of people's lives. It's happening across the country, from Chicago's Las Palmas to Los Angeles' century-old Pacific dining car. An estimated one in three restaurants in the U.S. will likely close by the end of the year. As Pope Leo XIII explains in his encyclical Libertas, laws have their origin in the natural and consequently in the eternal law of God. All legitimate human laws built upon God's eternal law and the natural law instilled in man. True liberty is not to do whatever you want, but to live in accord with right reason, your nature, and God's law. That's how one is truly free, to act as God intended you to act in accord with your nature and reason. But as St. Thomas Aquinas explains, when one sins, one acts in opposition to reason. One is moved by another. Consequently, sin makes a person subject to something foreign. The grave sinner then becomes a slave. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, that whoever commits sin is the slave of sin, John 8, 34. When the natural law was flagrantly rejected in America through the legalization of same-sex, quote, marriage and the normalization of LGBT abominations, the foundation of all law was rejected.